Hey everybody, this is JC at the Old Idaho Penitentiary. We're bringing you another Q&A session here, answering some of your questions that you've sent to us on what we're doing at the Old Idaho Penitentiary, site history, all those sorts of things that uh, are burning in your mind. And so I've got a few of the ones you've sent us here. Uh, first one I'm going to answer is, how many inmates escaped, if any? Typically what we tell guests is that there were over 500 different attempts to escape, 90 of them successful. One of our favorite successful escape attempts was uh, Fred George. He was a man who was here in 1918. Fred Gruber was actually his, his given name. Fred George was an alias. And so he was here during World War I. He and another man who was incarcerated here named Harry Hinton uh, stole enough red yarn that was being used for Red Cross sweater knitting for knitting for the war effort uh, to fashion a 25 foot long and one inch thick rope that they were actually able to escape over the wall with. And Gruber was caught after about a year in San Francisco after stealing a car. And so one of those apprehensions that wouldn't have taken place if it weren't for uh, committing another crime, but Harry Hinton was actually never caught as far as we know. And so Harry Hinton would be what we'd call a successful escape from the Idaho State Penitentiary in that he wasn't found again. But those 500 escapes, that's uh, 500 escape attempts and 90 successful is everything from escaping from the quarry or a prison farm outside of the prison walls or working as a trustee where you're outside of the walls already to those escapes that actually required the men and women to make their way over or under a wall, usually over rather than under. Anyway, next question here. So how many people died at the penitentiary? Uh, my coworker Anthony keeps track of this as there isn't a given number of how many deaths that occurred on site. We've had to calculate that number via uh, looking at newspaper articles and finding uh, notifications uh, in, uh, in correspondence and things like that of people who passed away here at the site. And so, so far we've recorded 129 deaths and that uh, includes those who died while they were uh, in the process of escaping. And there's at least a handful of, of people who died while they were on parole, but that number doesn't include those. Did Harry Orchard, or sorry, was Harry Orchard buried in the prison cemetery? He's actually buried in Morris Hill Cemetery here in Boise up on Leita. Uh, he was here for 46 years longer than any other person who was incarcerated here. He had a stroke in 1953 and he was taken to Morris Hill. He actually converted to Seventh-day Adventism here while he was incarcerated. He became the man who God made again, right? And so he... Uh, so that burial, that really nice burial that's up in Morris Hill Cemetery is probably privately funded in one way or another. John Jerko, actually one of the 10 men who was executed here. Uh, he was executed in 1926. He is also buried at Morris Hill Cemetery. Uh, just wondering if any former Idaho penitentiary inmates return to visit the prison nowadays. Obviously, that gets a little rarer as time goes on, uh, just due to the, you know, the aging process and uh, and folks passing away. But we've had a we've had a sort of a resurgence of people coming to visit out here once in a while, and uh, or to contact us to tell their story uh, through our oral history program. And uh, last year, in the first iteration of our captivating conversations series, the lecture series that we house here, uh, that we offer for members and for, for guests alike, featured a man named Chris Zavala. He was actually here from February 1965 to August 1966, so about a year, who graciously came and told us some firsthand stories of uh, being incarcerated here and answering guest questions, and that's actually available on YouTube, here on our YouTube page. We recorded it, as we're trying to do with all of our captivating conversations, and posting them as an online resource for you to view via YouTube, and so you should check that out. I'm sure there will be a link here somewhere in the or like an address, something like that, when uh, this video is posted later on. Now this question comes from, uh, actually uh, it's a sneaky question from one of our volunteers here at the site, uh, asked us, have any former law enforcement officers done time at the Idaho State Penitentiary? And 
Jack knows the answer to this, but there were several, uh, you know, former prison clerks, former officers, former officials who were uh, caught in some sort of corruption or, uh, or just turned to crime post-career. But one story in particular is uh, Ralph Golden, inmate uh, 7070. I know that because of my notes here. Uh, who was actually uh, a world, um, in the Army during World War II uh, and then became a police o- or a law enforcement officer here in Boise, uh, but only was in the service for about a year. So um, that was in 19, uh, uh, post-World War II in 1946, he was arrested for the murder of a woman named Mildred Ruscio here in Boise. And so after being, after exiting his law enforcement career. He became a cab driver here in Boise. And according to what we've been able to figure out so far with this story, he had driven a customer in his cab to Ruscio's house and committed the murder while they were there and then handed the, uh, handed his customer the gun and told him to hold on to it. And he was connected to the crime as having been there via, via his cab route. And then he was, appar- he was uh, apprehended in San Francisco um, and had to be extradited back here to Boise. And he was ultimately given life imprisonment after being found guilty. He pled not guilty uh, just due to loose connections. And so he ultimately ended up serving 10 years. He appealed, uh, he followed the appeals process all the way to the top as, as best he could and, and sought clemency and was denied all along the way and he ended up getting out after serving his uh, minimum 10 years before he was eligible for parole. And I think we are going to be uh, featuring him on the Behind Gray Walls podcast probably next season. Okay. And so, uh, um, so we'll, that'll give us some time to follow that story a little more closely and, and hopefully dredge up some more details on it. But he was, yeah, Ralph Golden was here for 10 years. Uh, a couple more questions here. So what are you guys currently working on here at the old Idaho Penitentiary? Uh, we actually just received our new book, Numbered Idaho's Prison for Women. It's, uh, it tells the story of um, all of the women who were incarcerated here at the old Idaho Penitentiary, the Idaho State Penitentiary, in the years that this was in operation up through 1968. It's a great piece that we're really excited to show you guys, and we're working on, uh, actually, kind of as we speak, getting that, um, getting those sales links posted for everyone to be able to get their copy. That'll be featured here in our gift shop physically and in our upcoming uh, online gift store. Uh, it'll be eligible for member discounts. Yeah, we're, we're excited for you guys to see that. It's been a, a great, it's been a, a long process, but we're, we're excited that it's arrived. It's part of the Idaho Women 100 initiative that the Idaho State Historical Society, sorry, and Idaho Women in Leadership are, have been, um, have co-founded and have been leading that celebrates the anniversary of women's suffrage. And so uh, this is, you know, not so much the, the trailblazing women so much as the women who took a different path, as we say, um, but still nevertheless uh, um, fascinating stories of, of Idaho women that we're excited to share with you. Uh, we are part of an initiative called Idaho History at Home, hashtag Idaho History at Home, featuring new resources that we're posting on the Idaho State Historical Society's webpage, everything from coloring pages to our podcast, Behind Gray Walls, to new video resources and educational resources, along with the rest of the Idaho State Historical Society that can be found at history.idaho.gov slash history at home. And we're working on those resources all the time as we speak. Finally, more spooky stories. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell you guys mine. Um, As you guys know, the Idaho State Penitentiary is considered one of the most haunted, if not haunted, places in Idaho. And that's just a general consensus, not my personal opinion. Of course, if anywhere in Idaho was going to be haunted, right, this would be, this would be as good a place as any. And I'm not one to, to uh, have many personal stories to tell. We're actually in Four House right now, 
which is the location of our haunted house during Frightened Felons, our annual Halloween fundraiser and large-scale event. And I do a lot of that setup, um, bring in big spiders and big clowns in here and all those sorts of things to, to get Frightened Felons set up. And so I'm really used to the fake stuff, but one day when I was locking up here, I was uh, in Five House in maximum security, and I was going up the stairs, and not only did the staircase feel really sort of occupied and more, the air was more full than it usually is, I don't know if that's a, a good way to describe that, but I was locking up the, the drop room door, which is the back door of Five House, going up the stairs, and I heard people upstairs, and I was thinking I was gonna have to, you know, notify our guests that we were closing and that that exit had been locked up. Uh, but by the time I got up there, there was actually no one up there. And so not only was I feeling like I wasn't by myself at that point, I was also feeling like I, I was also hearing, you know, the footsteps and the low, the faint chatter, uh, the faint, uh, faint conversations upstairs in the gallows area of Five House where the last execution took place here on site. And that is where a lot of people seem to have an experience, whether that's due just due to the physical implications of death in that building. But now I'm able to say that I have, have felt something while I've been here on site. I have been JC, I'm an interpretive specialist here at the site, and I hope you guys had a great time answering some of these questions with me. We're gonna post this on YouTube too. We're always happy to answer your questions. Shoot us a message on Facebook, send us an email, and we'll make sure that gets uh, to our, uh, our research specialist here who can answer those questions to you. But we're, uh, we're always happy to talk to you guys. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.